Do you pray before you make a decision? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A great Japanese warrior named Nobunaga was going to war with a fierce enemy with only one-tenth the number of men the opposition commanded. He knew that he could win the fight with a well-planned strategy, but his soldiers were in doubt. Nobunaga entered the shrine and offered his prayers. Then he came forth and tossed a coin in front of his men. Heads appeared. The soldiers were filled with confidence and were eager to win the battle. No one can change the hand of destiny, one of his attendants told him after the battle. Indeed not, said Nobunaga, and showed the coin which was doubled with heads on both sides. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus goes up a mountain and prays. The next day from among his disciples, he chose his inner circle of twelve. These twelve will be sent out on mission to make disciples of all men. We reflect today on how we make our decisions. In the normal course of things, we should choose from among several alternatives, analyze the pros and cons of each, and then make our decision. It is good to have a method in making decisions. We all want the best for ourselves and our loved ones. Making the right decisions will serve best this goal. Yet we can't win them all. Some decisions are right, some are wrong. Some are good and some are bad. There are three elements to make the right and good decisions. We need to win. W-I-N W is for desiring the will of God. We need to pray for what He wants for us. His will is always perfect. The right discernment requires deep contemplation to understand and accept what God wants for us. It requires us to be still and know that He is our God in Psalm 46.10. Following God's will demands our patience, for it may take time for us to be convinced to follow God's will and for our character to be chiseled and sculpted in God's image. God did not say, Seek and you shall find now. Knock and the door will be opened now. He answers at the right time, in the right way, for the correct reasons. I is for ensuring we are independent of sin. Sin clouds, confuses, corrupts our judgment. Repenting for and cleansing ourselves of our sinfulness allows God's grace to take hold of our mind. A clear mind becomes the nest of the Holy Spirit to hatch ideas that are in consonance with God's will. N is for having a posture of neutrality. When we pray to God, we should be open to possibilities, most important being the possibility that it may not be what we want or expect. For if we are biased from the start, our discernment can be one of dissentment. As our inner self is convinced that our way is the right way, our feel is the proper feel. If we empty our heart of any partiality, prejudice, and predispositions, we let God's will emerge. Our final prayer should be for the grace of acceptance to the will of our Father, for it shall liberate us from constant worry and fear. Whichever way the toes of the coin goes, whatever, wherever our decision leads us to, if we are guided by the Holy Spirit, we shall garner a big win, contented, at peace, assured, because we are one with the Father who is always perfectly right. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant my petitions and help me in my decisions. But if my will will not be good for me, then grant me what is best according to your will. And give me the grace of acceptance so that I will always be filled with gratitude and joy in all circumstances. All this I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.